Hey there, coaches. My name is Rich Hargett, and I'm the head football coach out here at Emmett High School in Emmett, Idaho, and I'm also the lead consultant for coaches all over the country with the surface-to-air system. In this video, we're going to take a look at something really interesting. We're going to take a look at how we teach and install RPOs, and we're going to compare it to some things that you've probably seen out there in YouTube and on the internet uh, that Joe Moorhead, who was formerly of Oregon and now is the head football coach at Akron, uh, some of the things he's doing to teach RPOs, and we're going to compare it um, to kind of what we're doing in the surface-to-air system to accommodate the, the high school level of teaching. And then when we get done, I'm going to actually share with you a few ways uh, that you could get even more on this topic. If you'd like to watch a, a longer video, a longer course on this very topic and go a little bit more on a deep dive uh, supported with film, I'm going to show you some ways here in just a little bit we can we can get you some information on that. All right. Also, it'd be super grateful if you would like and subscribe to the Surface to Air System YouTube channel. We've got a lot of great content on there, videos like this one and a host of other topics. So if you've not already done so, please subscribe to that channel. We'd be very, very grateful if you would do so. Thanks again, coaches. All right. Now, uh, this is a topic that I am super passionate about. Uh, I've been a teacher, coach at the high school level for 23 years now, uh, really, really passionate about recruiting and retaining and being around people that are good teachers. I think that good teachers are good coaches. They're a symbiotic relationship. And so I always talk to our coaches about how are we teaching? Okay, what is our teaching point there? Uh, how are we reteaching that to the kids? Did they understand what we're teaching them? Do we need to do it a different way. And so you're going to see here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and advance the slide. You're going to see here, this is just something that I took um, from a video I saw posted on the internet on Twitter uh, about how Joe Moorhead uh, reads the RPO game, kind of how he uh, has taught his quarterback to read RPOs. All right. So um, these are his words. Okay. I, I completely um, and, and paraphrasing things that he put in video, uh, a friend of mine on the internet, Alex Kirby, uh, shared this information with me through, uh, throw deep publishing. I saw this, uh, I believe on a tweet that he put out, he does a great job. And so I saw this and, and just typed up a few points. This is how he does it. Okay. His first point is, do we have an open or free access throw? The quarterback walks up and asks himself that question. If the answer is yes, take it. If the answer is no, move on to the next step. So that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to assume it's no. Okay. Now, again, if that free access throw is there, maybe you have a hitch, you have a bubble, they tell their guy to take it. That's their first point. Number two, are there any issues with pressure or a loaded box? All right. Now, what that means to me is do they have two coming off the edge? Do they outnumber you in the box? If the answer is yes, make a slide call. That's where they're going to slide the five offensive linemen and pick up that pressure or change to a pass protection and throw the pass concept they already have attached to the RPO. If the answer is no, then they move to the next step. That third step is they will ID the read defender pre-snap. So that could be a defensive end, that could be an outside linebacker, an interior linebacker, just depends upon who they're looking at. Um, they're going to ID that guy. They're going to identify him and find him, so to speak. Then number four, uh, is the read defender in position to tackle the ball carrier at or near the line of scrimmage? If the answer is yes, they're going to make that perimeter throw, okay, or the pitch if it was an option phase play. If the answer is no, they're going to work the middle run or the dive, okay? So if you think inside zone and that, um, you know, that five technique is going to come crashing, then they know they're going to need to pull the ball and make a throw. If he's clearly wide or he's, you know, he's got a three technique inside of him, he's not a squeeze player, then they're going to go ahead and, and move the hand of that ball off. Uh, what I thought was really interesting watching the video is if they're unsure, uh, then it's going to depend upon how athletic the QB is and how aggressive he wants to be. An aggressive give or an aggressive pull based upon his natural ability. Now, what that says to me is your quarterback's a guy. He can pull the ball. He can beat that defensive end in space. Then if you're unsure, pull that thing and go. If you've got a kid that's a little bit less fleet of foot, he's kind of slow, maybe not quite as athletic, then you're probably better served to give that football. Now, I think this is awesome. 
Okay, I think this is great stuff. Makes total sense to me. I process it. I watch the video, watch the whole thing. Think it makes total sense. Okay, uh, and and I'm a total Joe Moorhead fan. Think the guy's great. Um, actually, gonna take my staff to visit him at Akron uh, later in the spring, and so I'm really really excited about that. Okay, but I needed to make this work for me at the high school level, and so what we've done is we've asked some of those similar questions, right? Um, when you're teaching and installing RPOs, why do you do it? When do you do it? How do you do it? Uh, we talk about front door and back door throws. So in other words, if you're running zone to the right, we talk about any receiver on the right is a front door receiver. Any receiver on the left is a back door receiver. We have all sorts of pre-snap and post-snap conversations. We talk about whether the C gap is locked or the C gap is unlocked. Those are all the same sort of conversations and <clears throat> processes that we've had to play out over the years. And so what we've come up with, and I'm kind of comparing and contrasting here, is we've come up with something in the surface to air system that we call the radar method. All right. So in this, these are our quarterback responsibilities. R-A-D-A-R. -A -A these are the things we ask the quarterback to do, very similar to what Joe Moorhead did with his four steps. We have these five things the quarterback's going to do when he comes up to the line of scrimmage. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to review the box. So he's going to look out there and he's going to make a decision. Do we have numbers in the box or not? Now, I'm going to give you a really simple example. Let's say you're in 10P, two by two, you know, four wide receivers in the game, and they have six guys in the box. If they have six guys in the box, I'd ask the quarterback, how many do you have? He'd say, well, I have five offensive linemen and a ball carrier. I have six. But it's inside zone with the C-gap unlocked. So if the quarterback's reading somebody, we get a plus one. That means we have seven. Five linemen, a running back, and a quarterback reading equals seven. They have four down linemen and two linebackers. They have six. Do we have numbers in the box? This is a question I'd ask the quarterback. He'd say, yeah, we do. Okay, so we know we can run the ball. We have to see if we want to run the ball. Then he would go to number two. He would assess the coverage. We want to know, is the middle of the field open or the middle of the field closed? That's going to tell us so much about what type of RPOs are valid, which ones will work, which ones can we call. So I want him to know that. I want him to assess that coverage. I don't want a, a big, long, drawn-out conversation. Is the middle of the field open or closed? Okay, just know that. D, in the high school game, down in distance. I want him to know, is it third and one or third and seven? Is it second and two or second and eight? Because it's completely different. If it's second and two, I want you to lean heavy on that run and get the first down. But maybe in the game plan, I've said, hey, we want to take a shot on second and short. So I want the quarterback to know the down and distance check. Number four, do we have an access throw? Okay. Um, do we have the opportunity to just take a shot, right? Do we have an opportunity to, to throw the ball somewhere and pop it out there and take what they're, they're giving us? Is there a hitch open? Is there a bubble? Is there a slant? If the answer is yes, the quarterback's going to, based upon game plan, he's going to ask for the ball, and he's just going to wheel and throw and get it out there right now and, and attack the edge of the defense. If he cannot do so, he's then going to move to his read. Now, that might be reading a five technique. That might be reading an outside linebacker. Obviously, there's all sorts of different things you could be reading. So he's going to review the box to see if we have numbers. He's going to assess the coverage, check the down distance, look for a free access throw, and then finally read the play. Now, the KO options down there is what I call our kill or zero options. Let's say the quarterback walks up and radar fails. Now, we've done a big statistical analysis, and we found that radar holds up about 95% of the time. That's 9-5, 95% of the time for us. So we feel really comfortable it being our base answer on how to read RPOs. But what about that 5% that it doesn't? Those might be big plays in a game. So we have what's called our KO options or our kill options. Let's say the quarterback walks up, same situation, two by two, and they have seven in the box. Well, now he doesn't have numbers, okay? No numbers in the box. He assesses the coverage, and it's cover zero, all right? Now, he looks at the down distance, and it's second and nine. Well, he's got a problem now. He knows he's got to get yardage. He's already reviewed the box. He's assessed the coverage. He looks for an access throw. Let's say they're press man cover zero. Well, now he can't read anything. He doesn't have an access throw. He can't run the ball. 
what's he do? What we do is we train our quarterback that there's going to be three, four, or five kill answers. It might be checking to wide zone away from the, the seventh unblocked defender. It might be checking to seven-man protection and throwing the ball. It might be checking to speed option. We're going to have a list of plays he can check to to get himself out of trouble. If the quarterback can handle it and process it really well, then we'll let him just go ahead and check to one of those plays. If he doesn't handle that quite so well, then we will check and give him a play at the line. But again, you're talking about a very, very minute number of times. All right, so real quick, let's do this. Let's bounce all the way back here to the beginning, and let's review this. Joe Moorhead would tell his guys, do you have a free access throw? Yes, take it. No, move to the next step. Two, do you have issues with pressure or a loaded box? If the answer is yes, get into the pass protection, throw the concept called. If not, move on. ID the read defender pre-snap. And then finally, if he's in position to tackle the ball carrier, make the throw. If not, run the ball. If you're unsure, it depends upon the quarterback's abilities. In the surface-to-air system, we've made the decisions a little bit differently. We're going to radar it. We're going to review the box. Make sure you have numbers in the box. We will not run into a loaded box. We would check out of it. Assess the coverage. Check the down and distance. Now look for your free access throw. And if all else fails, read the play. If all of radar fails, which again, we're talking about a 5% eventuality, get into your kill options, either by the quarterback or from the sideline. I think this is a very similar way that Joe Moorhead is doing it, but just seems to work a little bit better for us at the high school level. Um, we just simplified it down to something that we teach well. And I think that's a key component of anything you install is how well do you teach it? And that acronym just sort of works a little bit better for us. All right. Now, just want to make this very simple, very short, very brief. Um, I want to show you a couple examples of radar in action. I don't want you to uh, go away from this presentation and not have a couple film representations to back it up. All right, coaches, now we're going to take a look at a couple film clips here just to give you a little taste test of what we're talking about and how radar is really going to be applicable out on the grass. So if we're looking at this clip, we're in a standard 2x2, two 10p. Two, I use this clip because it's really easy to teach when you have a balanced set like this. You know, there's, the, there's less moving parts um, for us and for them, right? Very, very, very simple way to, to teach a play when you're in one of these base formational structures. So this team is a, a big, odd front team. Let's just make life really simple for us. Let's start with the R. Okay, we're going to review the box. Well, I've got five offensive linemen, a back makes six, and we're running inside zone, so the quarterback is reading something. So that makes seven over here for the offense. How many do they have in the box? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's how I would count that. Hopefully that's how our quarterback would count it. So with the R, do we have numbers in the box? Yes, we can run the ball. Okay, move to the A. Assess. What's the coverage? Well, um, we know these guys are a big quarters team. Uh, this up top, clearly this guy looks like a nickel player to me, so they're in cover four up there to the field. Down here at the boundary, we have to kind of, or not, I guess not the boundary, but down here to the other side of the field, you know, we got to have a little bit of a cover two alert, make sure that that kid is actually bailing, he's not trapped. Okay, it's, it's not the first quarter, so our quarterback knows uh, no matter what that guy aligns, we, we kind of have a feel for what he's doing. Uh, down in distance, uh, this is first and five. They jumped off sides, and so it's you know it's a very manageable down in distance situation. Do you have an access throw? Up top, the answer is no. There's three over two. Down here to the bottom, we've got this outside linebacker bringing pressure, and they are basically um, a slow bail team. They're playing a little bit of true trap coverage, but they don't actually trap the flat well. Quarterback knows that. So he's going to take the access here. Okay. He could have moved to the R and read it if he did not like the access throw and made the decision late post snap, but he decides that he's going to go ahead and take the flat route. There it is. Just pops it out there. Pretty easy money. Okay. Not real complicated. Make a guy miss, pick up a few yards and there you go. All right, now, this next clip, again, we're just going to watch a couple clips here, coaches. We're not going to make this super, super complicated. 
Um, you can't really see because of the way the film is set up. The first round of the playoffs from two years ago, this team's a big 4-2-5 defense. Um, they are, are huge on quarters. They love to play quarters coverage. So how many do we have? Five linemen, six is the ball carrier. There's a read by the quarterback, makes seven. They have six in the box. You can see there, uh, very standard, very simple, not, not a real complicated look at that one. Okay, so we have numbers in the box. We're going to assess the coverage. You'll have to trust me because you can't see them. They're a big middle of the field open team, so they're in quarters. Um, the down and distance in this one, um, it's second and, I don't know, probably about four right there. Uh, I think the huddle account says six, but it's it's really probably about four yards. Um, so very manageable down and distance. Do we have an access throw or do we need to move to the read phase? Well, if you look up top, uh, we've got three receivers basically covered down by one guy. So the quarterback's going to move to the access throw, spit that ball out, and now make it really easy on us and let that thing turn into a, a pretty big gain out there. Okay, so again, we could go through a, a hundred of these clips, but I think you kind of get a taste test for it, a feel for it. If you want more of this, um, we've actually produced a course in the surface air system on radar. And that radar course will actually show you, um, you know, tons of clips, take you in a more in-depth understanding of how we do this, why we do it, how it works in games from multiple seasons. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful for you. If you're interested in that, check that course out. You can also obviously uh, join Surface to Air System. Members get that course free with their year membership. If you have questions after watching this video, put them in the comment section and I'll answer them just as quick as I can. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Coach Harvard or follow the Surface to Air System at S2A System. Or you can head over to our website at www.surfacetoairsystem.com. Again, if you head over there, you can purchase the course. Or as I said, you can look at our membership options, become a member, and then you would get this course free as part of your yearly subscription, as all of the things we produce are part of the yearly subscription. So coaches, I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.